day and welcome to another video. Right, today we're going to be looking at UIF. We're going to be looking at what UIF stands for, how exactly it works, and a little bit with the calculations, especially considering the payouts for UIF. So firstly, the question is, what is UIF? Well, UIF stands for the Unemployment Insurance Fund. It exists to provide short-term relief for workers when they become unemployed, are unable to work due to maternity leave, adoption leave, or illness. Essentially, it's the safety net for those people who are not able to earn currently so that they can stay on their feet until they can get some money. Right. If an individual is employed for 24 hours or more a month, stressing, a month, the employer is required to register the individual, the employee for UIF. It is the duty of the employer to register the employee. Okay. The worker doesn't have to go worry about that. The 24 hours a month thing is so that we can make sure that people who are casual workers, such as domestic workers or people who provide uh, private garden services as individuals, etc., if they're working for someone on a regular basis, then the employer has to go and contribute to them. It gives some sort of protection there. All right. Every month, the employer deducts 1% from the employee's wage or salary to pay to the UIF. Okay. So that is a deduction from the salary. There is also a contribution from the employer, okay, on the employee's behalf. That means that a total of 2% of whatever this person earns is paid to GYF. Uh, there is a maximum, it changes every year uh, due to the fact that this is a video that's going to be up for a while. Uh, I'm not gonna give you the exact maximum because it changes year on year. Okay, let's take a look at what the fund provides for. So it provides for the following benefits, unemployment benefit, illness benefit, death benefit, adoption benefit, and maternity benefit. The first one, employment, unemployment benefit. If a worker contributes to the UIF and whose services have ended, may claim. Okay. Now this is important because if a person loses their job, especially with the whole uh, COVID-19 pandemic that we've had and people have lost their jobs, that's a situation where the business has closed down or if the factories have closed down or something, the business is no longer functioning, then there's protection. You may not claim if you have resigned. The assumption is that you've resigned out of your own will. It's not your, it's your choice to be leaving now. And you probably are resigning to go to another job or to go to study or some other thing. That's why you don't get paid for that because it's not unexpected that you'll be resigning. Illness benefit. The worker contributed and cannot work due to illness may claim up to six months. It's presumed that after six months, the person will either be better or will be able to claim for other uh, social benefits that will cover them. Or the death benefit, if the worker who contributed to the UIF dies, their dependents may claim. This is especially true if the person who was contributing to the UIF was the main uh, income source for the family. It gives a chance for the family to be able to get back on their feet and hopefully find some sort of other income for that time. All right, there's an adoption benefit to sort of level, it levels the field with people who are on maternity benefits. If you've contributed to the IAF and you adopt a child who's under the age of two, you may claim leave without pay and then claim from the UIF. All right, uh, it's presumed that if the child is older than two, they can be looked after by someone else and you don't need to be there constantly with them. Uh, like with a really small child. And then maternity benefits. Uh, some workers don't have the benefit of paid maternity leave from their employer, and so they're able to claim back from the UIF uh, to help cover their expenses, etc., and the loss of income while they're on leave uh, due to the uh, maternity leave. All right, now let's look at the payouts. Okay. The payout depends on how long you've been contributing to the UIF. It accumulates credits. So one day's benefit for every six days worked. So if a person works six days, they get one day's worth of benefits. If they work for 30 days, they're gonna get five days benefit. This example here, the person contributes for six months, which is 180 days, they're able to claim 30 days of benefits. Uh, the minimum from what I've been able to see is that you should be contributing for six months at minimum before you can claim from the UIF, which means the minimum amount that they're probably gonna pay out for is one month. All right, a worker will not unfortunately receive their full salary. 
it's not really reasonable if you're contributing only 1% of your salary for a period of time, but you can receive up to 58% of whatever your salary is for that duration. The assumption is that you're not working full time anymore, so you're not going to need all the money to be able to do your transport to and from work, etc. So it's 58%, it's enough to look after you, okay? And it's only for the duration of how many credits you have. The longer you work, the higher the percentage is that goes along with the number of days you can claim. So let's take a look at an example of the situation. We've got Craig. Craig worked for Tabo as a inst installer of irrigation systems. He works Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. 150 Rand was his wage. Okay, the assumption is that those days that he worked were eight hours. So he's working more than 24 hours a month easily. Okay, after five years due to the drought, uh, Tabo had to downsize and that left Craig unemployed. He's able to receive 58% of his salary from the UI due to the fact that he's worked so long. All right, so how many days of credit has Craig accumulated? And then how much will the UI ever pay him out in total? But first, let's take a look at the number of days that he should have been able to get. So if you work three days a week, 52 weeks in a year, five years, gives you 780 days that he has worked. So working on that, if we take that and divide it by six, we get 130 days worth of credit that he should be able to claim here. Okay, 130 days. Now, he gets 58% of what he earned. So he has 58% of 150 Rand, which is 87 Rand per day that he'll be able to claim back. He's got 130 days worth of credits. So if we take 87 Rand multiplied by the 130 days, the maximum he'll be able to claim is a is a 11,310 Rand out of the UIF while he looks for other employment. Okay, now one important thing to remember that might come up is that there are times when the employer will pay uh, in advance or prepay for a few months for the UIF. This happens when they're going on holiday for December or something like that. They don't want to worry about having to jump onto a computer and make a payment to the UIF on Christmas Day, so they're going to prepay for a month or two so that they can then just claim the money back off the employee. It just, it's a thing of convenience, but you might see questions like that come up. All right, to sum it up, UIF, the Unemployment Insurance Fund, it's there to protect workers when they're unemployed, provide some temporary relief for them and pay them out for their loss of income due to various reasons okay so hopefully that's helpful and uh, stay safe thank you